Recall that most traits or phenotypes are controlled by multiple genes. And in the algorithm that geneticists employ to determine how multiple genes control uh, traits, there are three steps. In the first step, you generate or isolate uh, many mutant strains. In the second step, you cross the mutant strains with each other, or, or in other words, you perform complementation to determine whether the strains are mutant for different genes or whether they are mutant for the same genes. Now, let us discuss the third step where we know a trait is controlled by two genes and we would like to determine how those genes interact by making double mutant individuals or mut uh, individuals who are uh, homozygous for the mutant alleles of both the genes. And what you do in, in this step is you carry out a dihybrid cross and the ratios of the different phenotypes you get in, in, in the progeny of the dihybrid cross is diagnostic or it tells you what kind of interaction it is. To start with, let's do the simplest case when there is no interaction between the two genes. In corn snakes, the camouflaged pattern, a pigmentation of um, their skin is produced by two different genes. The wild type allele of the B gene makes an enzyme that converts a colorless precursor into black pigment. And the wild type allele of the O gene converts a colorless precursor into orange pigment. And these are two independent pathways. And so the genes don't interact. Now, before we uh, uh, carry out the dihybrid cross and determine the phenotypic ratios, let's write down the phenotypes of different combinations of uh, dominant and recessive um, phenotypes for both the genes. So if you have the dominant alleles of both the genes, you will have O plus, so you will have the enzyme that makes the orange pigment, and you will have a B plus allele, and therefore you will have uh, uh, enzyme one, and both orange and black pigments will be made, and the phenotype will be camouflaged. If you have the dominant allele of the O gene, but you are homozygous for the B gene, you will have enzyme 2 and you will make orange pigment, but you will not have enzyme 1 since you don't have any wild type alleles uh, or B plus alleles. Um, you won't have enzyme 1 and therefore you won't make black pigment and therefore your phenotype is going to be orange. If you are um, homozygous for the mutant allele of the O gene, you will not have enzyme 2 and therefore you won't have orange pigment. But if, if you have the uh, one copy or uh, at least one copy of the B plus allele, you will have enzyme and therefore you will make black pigment and your phenotype is going to be black. Finally, if you are homozygous for the recessive alleles of both the genes, and this in fact is the double mutant, then you will have neither um, the, the uh, enzyme one nor enzyme two, and therefore your phenotype is pink. Now, in the next step, let's work out the dihybrid cross to see what ratios of these four phenotypes, camouflage, black, orange, and pink, are produced.
And in the dihybrid cross, we are crossing an individual who's O plus over O and B plus over B with another such individual. And we can use our familiar tricks of separating the traits out to, to um, uh, and using uh, branching diagrams to, to compute the phenotypic ratios. Um, in, in the first trait, I will have three quarters of uh, individuals who will be O plus over dash, that is O plus over O plus or O plus over O, and therefore having the dominant phenotype, which in this case is making orange pigment. And a quarter of the individuals are going to be homozygous for the mutant allele, uh, the recessive allele, and so they won't make the orange pigment. Similarly, for the second trait, when I carry out the monohybrid cross, I'm going to have a three quarters of the individuals as B plus over dash. Um, that means they will make the, they have at least one allele um, that makes the black pigment, that makes the enzyme. And a quarter of the individual will be homozygous for the mutant allele. And therefore they won't have the enzyme and they will not have the um, black pigment and I can now construct a branching diagram for these uh, phenotypic ratios and once you have written down uh, the, the branching diagram you'll have something like this where you will have um, nine sixteenth individuals who have the dominant phenotype for both the traits. So O plus over dash and B plus over dash. And three sixteenth of the individuals will be um, dominant for the first trait, so O plus over dash, and homozygous for the recessive allele of the second trait. Another 3 16th are going to be homozygous recessive for the first trait, so O over O, but dominant for the second trait, which is B plus over dash. And finally, 1 16th of the individuals are going to be double mutants. That is, they will be homozygous for the mutant allele of the O gene, as well as homozygous for the mutant allele of the B gene. And once we work these um, uh, ratios out there, the familiar nine is to three is to one uh, 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio um, that we get in typical dihybrid crosses. And we can then annotate what are the phenotypes we are going to get. You are going to get 9 sixteenths camouflaged individuals. Um, a 3 sixteenth individuals are going to be orange. Um, Another 3 16th individuals are going to be black, and 1 16th of the individuals are going to be double mutant or pink. And therefore, when you have no interactions between two genes that control the same trait, in this case, the pigmentation of the corn snake, you get a 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio of the four phenotypes. So in this example of the corn snakes, the two genes were in different pathways and therefore the two genes had no interactions. What happens when the two genes 
are in the same pathway. And we've already seen an example like this of the harebell plant, which makes blue flowers or, or the wild type flowers are blue. And we know that um, through our complementation analysis um, that the um, this phenotype is controlled by two genes, the W1 gene or the W1 plus the wild type allele makes enzyme one, which converts colorless precursor one into colorless precursor two. And the W2 gene, the wild type allele W2 plus makes enzyme two that converts colorless precursor two into blue pigment. And, um, you know, we have two strains. One is pure breeding uh, uh, for the mutant allele of the first gene. And so W1 over W1 is the mutant. And this plant is also going to be homozygous for the wild type allele of the second gene. On the other hand, the second strain is mutant for the second gene. So it's W2 over W2, whereas it's homozygous for the wild type allele of the first gene. And as we did with the uh, corn snakes with no interactions, first, let's write down the different phenotypes, uh, the dominant and recessive combinations of phenotypes that we can have. So if you are W2, W1 plus over dash and W2 plus over dash, that means you have at least one copy of the wild type allele of the W1 gene, so you make enzyme one. You also have at least one copy of the wild type allele W2 plus of the second gene, so you have enzyme two. Then you will convert colorless precursor one into the second precursor, which will then get converted into blue pigment. And therefore, you are going to be blue. On the other hand, if you are, you have the dominant phenotype of the first trait, so you are W1 plus um, um, of the first gene, so W1, W1 plus over dash, um, then you have at least one copy of the first enzyme. Um, and so you will convert colorless precursor one into colorless precursor two. However, you are homozygous for the mutant allele of the second gene. So you are W2 over W2. You do not have any wild type alleles to make enzyme two. And therefore, colorless precursor two cannot get converted into blue pigment. And your phenotype is going to be white. If you are homozygous for the mutant allele of the first gene, so you are W1 over W1, but you have the dominant phenotype of the second gene, so you have at least one copy of the W2 plus wild type allele, and therefore you have enzyme 2. It does not matter, however, because you do not have a single wild type allele um, for the first gene, therefore you don't have enzyme one, and therefore you will never be able to convert colorless precursor one into colorless precursor two, um, and you will end up with a white flower. Finally, if you are the double mutant and therefore you are homozygous for the mutant allele of the first gene as well as uh, the mutant allele of the second gene, then you have neither enzyme and you will remain stuck at the colorless precursor one stage and you will have a white phenotype. Next, let us work out the dihybrid cross and see what phenotypic proportions are expected when both the genes are in the same pathway. As before, we have four combinations of, of phenotypes or phenotypic classes. You can be dominant for the first gene, 
which is W1 plus over dash, and also dominant for the second gene, so W2 plus over dash, you could be dominant for the first gene, W1 plus over dash, but have the recessive phenotype, so be homozygous for the mutant allele of the second gene. You could be mutant for the first gene, therefore have the recessive phenotype or um, homozygous uh, uh, for the W1 allele for the first gene and have the dominant phenotype or have at least one enzyme making allele W2 plus over dash and finally you could be the double mutant which is W1 over W1 as well as W2 over W2 and as before in this dihybrid cross the uh, ratios um, of these phenotypic classes are 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. Now when we write down the phenotypes however even though the the genotypes of these classes differ many of them have the same phenotypes. If you are dominant dominant that means w1 plus over dash and w2 plus over dash you are blue if you are dominant recessive that means w1 plus over dash and w2 over w2 you are white in the third case where you are w1 plus over w1 so homozygous for the mutant allele of the first gene but um, have the dominant phenotype of the second gene w2 plus over dash you are still white because um, the colorless precursor one never gets converted into colorless precursor two and if you are a double mutant you are still white so now instead of getting the normal nine is to three is to uh, three is to one ratio that we get in dihybrid crosses as a result of independent assortment, because of the interactions between the genes, we in fact end up with a nine is to seven blue is to white ratio. And so this is called a modified nine is to three is to three is to one ratio and as we look at different types of interactions you will get different modified ratios and these modified ratios are diagnostic of what kind of interaction there is for example if we did not know what uh, how two genes interacted and we carried out a dihybrid cross and saw a 9 is to 7 ratio in the, in the, in the progeny, that would be a strong hint that the two genes act in the same pathway.